Hello, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that was recently fired from its job directing the new Star Wars movie, only to be replaced by Danny Bonaducci of the Partridge family. What is it with stupid redhead kid actors turned directors? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at legendary Buffy the Vampire Slayer from Upper Deck. In Legendary, Buffy the Vampire Slayer from Upper Deck, one to five players are, of course, going to go ahead and take on the evil big bads of Sunnydale uh, as they use the heroes from Buffy the Vampire TV show. Now, this is a legendary game, not a legendary encounters game, so it's a pretty straightforward game. If you played the Marvel legendary game, um, you pretty much know what to expect from Buffy. So I'm not going to get too much, of course, into the uh, uh, rules of Legendary. You can check out our Legendary uh, Marvel game in Season 1, Episode 5 of The Discriminating Gamer for kind of a rules breakdown. Um, I will kind of talk more about the differences here between this set and, and some of those other Legendary sets. I will say, of course, just the basics. You get, a, you get different hero deck cards, you shuffle them all together, you get you create a villain deck, which has, of course, various villain groups and a uh, uh, master strike cards and plot twists, you know, scheme twists. you got to have a scheme that's the specific uh, challenge you're trying to overcome. Then, of course, you pick a big bad. There are several big bads in this set. That's your main villain you're trying to defeat. you got to defeat him four times in order to win the game. Now, uh, what's different here about this Buffy the Vampire legendary set from previous... Uh, sets, um, there's really kind of a couple of major differences here. The first thing is uh, the tokens. You have these Courage tokens. Courage tokens are pretty cool because there are various game uh, mechanics, various uh, cards that will come up or conditions that will come up in the game that will grant a player a Courage token. A Courage token is essentially a bankable uh, recruit slash attack point. You can use it for either. So if you're you're you got your cards there and you're one shy away from taking down a bad guy, you can spend your curse token to take him down. Or you're one recruit point away from getting that card you really want, you can spend that recruit token and grab it. And of course, you can spend as many as you as you want on your turn. So that can really help. And they're not the easiest things to come by. You're not going to be getting a lot of them constantly. But when you do get them, they're going to be very helpful to you in the course of the game. Now, the other big major change of Buffy the Vampire Slayer from previous Legendary Games is this light-dark track. Essentially, you have this track with three light spaces and three dark spaces. Now, over the course of the game, certain conditions are going to cause uh, things to advance the light, in which case you move the light up toward the three, or advance the dark, in which case you move it down toward the three, the negative three. Now, this is important because if the, the big bads have a dark ability, if ever you're at three and something says to advance the dark, that triggers the big bad ability. It goes back to dark one and something bad happens. Uh, whatever that big bad specific dark ability is, it won't be pleasant. Now, also, too, with the light abilities, if you are at three and something says to advance the light, whoever is the current player gets a courage token that way, and then the, the light resets as well. So that's very important. But why the track, more than that, why the track is important is throughout the game, you're going to be getting cards are going to come up um, or, or, you know, a, a, a master strike from the big bad will deal with it. But things will occur depending on where the light track is. So if it's dark and something happens, something really bad can happen. For instance, some of the big bads, um, if they've got, you know, uh, if their attack to attack them is like seven, uh, they also have their uh, attack is equal to wherever the dark track is. So if you're on dark three, he'd now be a 10. Uh, you know, a two, he'd be a nine. So there's stuff like that going on. You also have some of the schemes that will kind of affect the, the um, what goes on during a light or the dark. Um, 
So there's there, there's all sorts of different things. I mean, some of the some of the cards too will will say you just have to manipulate the track. For instance, you can play a card, one of the Willow cards, which is a really good card. You play it, and it will say you get the, like three attack, but you either have to discard a card from your hand, or you have to move the dark track down. So you got some tough choices there as well. So this light and dark track is kind of another dimension that kind of is going to affect a lot, how a lot of the cards play and a lot of the, how the, the master strikes work or the scheme works. Um, it's going to be something you're constantly going to be paying attention to throughout the course of the game. So you're going around and around. You are recruiting cards with your recruit points from the library. You are attacking cards in the town with the attack ability, the, the, the villains. And you're trying to take down the uh, the big bad four times. If you can do that, then the good guys win the game. It's a cooperative game. Or, of course, you can, uh, if the big bad feels it's evil wins on the scheme uh, card there, then, of course, evil wins the game and you are all destroyed. Um, if, the, of course, the uh, uh, heroes, if they win, you can look at the victory points in your victory pile from bystanders, from villains you've defeated, and you can add it up for an individual victory if you want. But generally, it is a cooperative game. It plays really well as a cooperative game. And that, of course, is how you play the legendary Buffy the Vampire. Slayer. So just a quick note, I have never seen an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I have never seen it. I saw the movie, the 1992 movie, when I was in high school and I enjoyed it. I like Pee Wee Herman in it, but I never saw the TV show. And, um, you know, it's one I just eh, never really had much of a desire to. I'm sure it's a fine show. Um, when the good people at Upper Deck sent me this to review, and I, and I was excited to play this, even though I'm not familiar with the IP. I think it's the first um, legendary game that I was completely unfamiliar with the IP. Um, I, I still wanted to play it because I love Legendary so much and I always know they're going to come up with some fun and innovative stuff so I really wanted to play this one as well and I have some, some good friends down here who had seen the, here in Texas who had seen the show were familiar with it and of course they were providing commentary the whole time we were playing the game which was fun um, so we weren't completely lost uh, what I found is, having never seen the show, and so often when you play an IP game, a lot of your enjoyment comes from being familiar with the IP. And what I found here playing Buffy, the, the Vampire Slayer, is that despite the fact that I've never seen a, a, a an episode of the show, I still really enjoyed this game. It was challenging, it was fun, it was the legendary that I love. This is just a great, solid game. You don't have to be a Buffy fan to love this game. And I do, I love this game. Um, I, I like this one. I don't like it quite as much as Marvel, but I like it better than um, uh, than the Big Trouble in Little China. I like the Big Trouble in Little China game, but to me that was the weakest Legendary or Legendary Encounters game I've played so far. Now i got to tell you, I, I, I like Legendary Encounters generally better than I like the Legendary games, but I would have to say I probably like this game even better than the Predator Legendary Encounters. Now, I like that game a lot, but I don't know. I really like this light and dark track, and I like how the cards influence that track, and that, again, you get some really tough decisions. So I maybe like this one better than Predator. Not as much as the other Encounter ones, and not as good as Marvel, but, but better than Legendary Encounters Predator and better than Big Trouble in Little China. I think that's fair. I, I really got a kick out of... Uh, Legendary Buffy the Vampire Slayer. For somebody who's never seen the IP, I, I, I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. I thought I would probably like this one. I, I thought I'd like it. I didn't think I'd like it as much as some of these others. And I do, which uh, to me is very surprising. But I really got a kick out of it. Now, there are, of course, a ton of cards in this game. Um, and I'm not going to go through and give you give you breakdown card previews. I, uh, I just don't have the time here. Um, but suffice it to say, it is. there are some really fun cards. There's some really fun schemes, fun characters, fun, fun villains. A lot of really, really, really great content with these cards in this game, and I like it a lot. So the recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Legendary Buffy the Vampire Slayer is buy it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today on the Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, and on the discriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are the Discriminating Gamer, and ladies and gentlemen, while you're enjoying the end credits, I'm going to go ahead and start reading the comments that you're posting there. So, uh, enjoy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. That's good. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Doug. I just appreciate it. Oh, Peter. Hey, I always appreciate it. You know what? I always, I always welcome the comments there. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. I... Hey, Tony, that is way out of line. You do not write that crap on my. Ah, who am I kidding? You're always welcome to post on my page. Some kids got possessed by hyena souls. <laughs>